Ray tracing has been with us for a couple of years now. It was first introduced in the RTX 20 series cards, and I think people at the time, especially people who had a 10 series card, probably decided that they might just wait to the next generation. They didn't want to be the early adopter. And I think people who did that, they were generally happy with how ray tracing looked like. It was just the performance was pretty underwhelming, especially if you turn the ray tracing on without any DLSS. So we've had a whole generation now and we have the RTX 30 series cards, but the only problem is these cards are incredibly expensive. So uh, we have to ask the question, is it really worth it to buy an NVIDIA GPU for ray tracing, especially when these cards cost upwards of a thousand dollars? So today what we're going to do is look at Cyberpunk 2077 and compare the footage for ray tracing versus non-ray tracing. Okay, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. According to this Wikipedia table, there aren't really that many games that support ray tracing. So if you're wondering if it's worth it in terms of game support, at this moment in time, it probably isn't. That being said, both Unreal Engine and Unity are getting native DLSS support, which given the performance boost should probably mean that more games will adopt ray tracing sooner rather than later. Also, it does look like, based on this table anyway, NVIDIA GPUs has more ray tracing support than AMD GPUs. This PC Gamer article says that the RX 6800 XT runs at half the frame rate as the RTX 3080 in Vulkan tests, so it seems to me that for the time being anyway, NVIDIA GPUs would be the one to get if you really wanted ray tracing. Right now though, graphics cards prices are out of whack mostly because they're based on mining return on investment. So if you don't really care as much for ray tracing, an AMD GPU could be the better deal. In today's video, we'll mostly be doing a spot the difference analysis, so I'm not focused on the performance of the game as much, only the effects of ray tracing itself. I'm using an RTX 3070 at 1440p ultra graphics and ultra ray tracing. Note that the ray trace scene operates at about 30fps, while the non-ray trace scene is at around 55 to 60fps. Now normally to bump the performance up, you can and should always turn on DLSS, but I didn't want that to have an effect on the image. Now just a quick definition of ray tracing and we'll get started. Ray tracing is a rendering technique that can produce incredibly realistic lighting effects. Essentially an algorithm can trace the path of the light and then simulate the way that the light interacts with the virtual objects it ultimately hits in the computer generated world. In the past graphics were rendered with a combination of texture maps, post processes over the top that approximated how light would work created based on the artist's or developer's interpretation. Now with ray tracing light can be bounced in a scene that is more realistic creating a better final image. Let's take a look at Cyberpunk 2077 now. In this first scene I'm driving around the block and after checking the resulting footage I honestly don't see a significant difference between the ray trace scene versus the non ray trace scene. There are some minor differences, for example there's stronger reflections on the car itself from neon signs and there are moments where the ambient lighting to the edges of the scene appear more realistic though that's relatively subjective. But I find it interesting that in motion, ray tracing is generally difficult to discern the difference and I really have to stop the footage to be able to see any differences. This standstill scene is interesting because in the non-ray trace scene there is an attempted approximation at what will happen in the reflections. However, the ray tracing shows that the result is actually a little different. From further away, reflections appear blended in and less distinct than the non-ray trace version. In the non-ray trace version, the reflection is treated as one entity, but in the ray trace version, the reflection differs on each concrete block. In this indoor scene, the ray tracing and non-ray tracing capture is almost identical. The lantern in the ray trace scene is a little lighter and the reflection is missing on the pillar but everything else is the same. In this shot, the reflection in the water is not picked up by the non-ray trace scene, otherwise shadows from characters behave pretty similarly in both captures. 
The differences between ray tracing and non-ray trace scenes is most clear when materials are transparent. In this scene, all the cups and items on the counter are reflected in the glass with ray tracing, but not in the non-ray trace scene. There's also an approximation of a neon sign reflected in the non-ray trace version that does not appear in the ray trace version. In this scene, there's a strong bike reflection in the ray trace scene, and the letters in the sign above the door can be seen in the reflection, whereas it's impossible to make out in the non-ray traced version. Here you can see this more clearly, where in the ray traced version you can read all the letters in Deputy Zhao's illustrious fried chicken sign in the reflection. Perhaps it's a little too clear. This one is interesting because there's some stronger neon sign reflections in the non-ray trace version, but in the ray trace scene, look how as people walk in front of the glass, their reflection is picked up, but it's not in the non-ray trace version. In this reflection, the ray tracing provides an extremely detailed reflection in the puddle, but the non-ray trace version blends all the details together. Here's an example where ray tracing reflections works on other types of surfaces such as on the steel column here, you can see the man's colours in his jacket reflected on the steel. Let's talk about shadows and in this shot I decided to see how shadows would play out by putting a car in a highly sunlit scene and seeing how light interacted in the car. I do believe the ray trace scene, it is darker due to the absence of actual light rays, whereas the non-ray trace version is an approximation of the colour with standard rasterization and shadows post-processing. It is a problematic scene to get right from all angles for pre-baked textures before ray tracing the algorithms allow the scene to get closer to the true result. On the right hand side you can see that the shadows created in rasterization were not as dense as they are in the ray trace version. This may be because the rules for creating shadows may be to create softer shadows around the edges which resulted in very soft shadows for these blades of grass. To illustrate this phenomenon, the ray trace tree has a more defined shadow versus the one created with just post processing shadow effects. Having very defined shadows allows light to pass through as well and as you can see here with the more defined shadows, more sun hits the face and torso of this character on the left. In this final shot you can see all of the ray tracing effects working together, the reflection in the puddle at the front is more distinct in the ray trace version, the shadows on the building are more defined and there are reflections in the windows, particularly the window on the right hand side. So there you have it, a video with ray tracing on and ray tracing off, and going through the effects in Cyberpunk 2077. In my opinion, ray tracing is a subtle feature. You're not getting more glowing neon lights, you're not getting an upgraded version of the game like you can suddenly play it at a higher resolution or higher frame rate or with more post-processing effects turned on. Ray tracing is just to replace standard rasterization techniques which previously were done by artists and developers by approximation which are now processed by mathematical algorithms that should theoretically create a more accurate final result. But as you can see, standard rasterization gets pretty close to the ray traced version. And personally for me, it's not really something I would spend extra money on, but if it's there, it's an interesting feature to turn on and off and play with how lighting interacts with the virtual world. If you're wondering whether to get an AMD or Nvidia card because of ray tracing, well I think the best answer would be just to get what's available and the best value for your money. That's going to be it for this one, make sure to hit the like button and also to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.